Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Sorry for the late upload. I'm dealing with a water leak. I just had to go to town to get parts. I'm hoping it's going to work. And we're waiting for the hot water heater to fill back up now to see if it's going to work. Tonight we're going to be reading out of 1 John 1 7. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Let's go there. 1 John is one of my favorite books in the Bible. The whole verse says it, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Let's see, one, two, three, four. I'll just start at the beginning here. We'll read it in context. The word of life. 1 John 1, 1. That which was from the beginning, and that's Jesus, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. That's Jesus Christ. The more proof that Jesus is the word, that this is Jesus here. There's a written representation of him. Verse 2. The life was manifested, and we have seen, and bear witness, and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you, that your joy may be full. And this is a great joy that we can take in this. Walking in the light, verse 5. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Big difference between a believer and a false professor. Big difference. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And this is for all those people out there that say they can be sinless. You have to be sinless. No. Paul, or John is making a very clear statement here. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. False professors in varying degrees will do this. This is one of the ways you can tell that they're a false professor. This blood of Christ is the most precious thing in all of creation. Cleanseth, says the text, not shall cleanse. Interesting note he's making here. What is it? What is he quoting? The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Not shall cleanse us from all sin. Cleanseth. It's gone. Your sin is gone. Do you still have sin? Yes. You still have sin? You have no condemnation or judgment for it anymore. You've been washed of it. You have a spiritual being within you. The inner man fighting with the outer man. The outer man still has sin. It's the inner man that goes to heaven. Cleanses says the text, not shall cleanse. There are multitudes who think that as a dying hope, they may look forward to pardon. This would be people that believe in perdition. Oh, how infinitely better to have cleansing now that it depend on the bare possibility of forgiveness when I come to die. Some imagine that a sense of pardon is an attainment only obtainable after many years of Christian experience. There's a lot of, lot of Christians preaching this today. But forgiveness of sin is a present thing, a privilege for this day, a joy for this very hour. Brothers and sisters, the moment you became a Christian, your sins were forgiven. Now, what is John? the point John's making is, is he's talking about if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and we make Christ a liar. We still have sin. And we confess those sins to him. But the difference between a believer and a false believer or false professor or an unbeliever is they don't have a problem with their sin. They don't see their sin. They don't mourn their sin. They don't grieve their sin. We do. As born-again believers, we know what we are. We know what we came from. We know what we still have within us and the things that we struggle with. And we grieve them. We hate them. We're aware of them vividly. And we fight them. Big, big difference. The moment a sinner trusts Jesus, he is fully forgiven. Period. Done. End of story. There is no advance where you have to do something or make certain things in order to get forgiveness. It's done. It's over with. Jesus said his, his final words as a human being, it is finished. What was finished? 
the redemption for sin. It's finished. It's done. Everyone, past, present, future, forgiven. Done deal. Sin was dealt with completely. There's nothing else that has to happen. But a lot of people today are, are going another direction. Well, you still have to say 157,000 Hail Marys. You still have to pay your penance. You still have to this. You still have to that. No, no, no. No, no, no. The text being written in the present tense also indicates continuance. It was cleanseth yesterday. It is cleanseth today. It will be cleanseth tomorrow. What does the Bible say about Jesus? About God? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It will be always so with you, Christian, until you cross the river. Every hour you may come to this fountain, for it cleanseth still. Notice likewise the completeness of the cleansing. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Not only from sin, but from all sin. There is no other sin remaining. Oh, these people out here saying, oh, no, that was just your past sins. You're not reading the Bible. Oh, I read the Bible. No, you're not, because you're not understanding what he did for you. You think there's something you have to do to help obtain, uh, atone for your sins in the future. You've got a huge problem. Reader, I cannot tell you the exceeding sweetness of this word, but I pray God the Holy Ghost to give you a taste of it. Manifold are our sins against God. Whether the bill be little or great, the same receipt can discharge one as the other. The blood of Jesus Christ is as blessed a divine a payment for the transgressions of blasphemy. Peter, as for the shortcomings of loving John. Our iniquity is gone, all gone at once, and all gone forever. Blessed completeness. What a sweet theme to dwell upon as one gives himself to sleep. What an amazing thing to think about is that whenever he said, I'm going to take your sins and cast them as far as the east is from the west, he wasn't talking about on the earth. He was talking about in all of creation. You can't go as far as the east is from the west. That's how far they're going to go. He's going to toss them over his shoulder into the deepest deep, never to be mentioned again. Gone. Done. Finished. Now, does that mean we have an excuse now to go and sin all we want? No. But his grace and justification covers us as we grow in Christ unto the day of redemption. In the day of redemption, he finishes everything he started in us. You have forgiveness. Don't let other people confuse you. You have that forgiveness. Done. Deal. End of story. You can't sin your way out of his good graces. You can't sin your way out of salvation. It's impossible. Because his atonement is a perfect atonement. And it covers all sin, past, present, and future. For all of mankind. Sins against a holy God. Sins against his righteous laws. Sins against his love, his blood, sins against his name and cause. Sins immense, as is the sea. From them all he cleanseth me. If you don't have full cleansing uh, of sin, if you don't have full forgiveness, well, what is the point of salvation? What's the point of being saved? It doesn't do you any good. Because now there's something you have to do. What was the point of him dying on the cross if it wasn't good enough to take care of everything? That's why we're in the age of grace. This is a different event. This is a different thing here. Forgiveness is forgiveness, period. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about this. There's no well, but. There's no add-on. There's no nothing else. It's done. If it wasn't, then his sacrifice wasn't perfect. But see, he made a perfect sacrifice. And that sacrifice is enough, more than enough, to cover every single possible sin anybody has done, will do, or is currently doing. He forgives you of those sins. That blood atonement at the moment of salvation washes all that away. We come back to him in repentance because we realize there's more sins. Lord, I, I just found another one. What is this? What's wrong with me? You're in a, you're in a flesh full of sin. I'm coming to get you, and when I do, I'm going to redeem you from that. See, that, that, redeem, that redeeming, and part of that redeeming is redeeming us from this sin flesh. What does the Bible say? He nailed the law to the cross, and he imprisoned sin in the flesh. It doesn't follow us. It's still in the flesh. So if we still have sin, like John says, well, of course we have sin. We're going to have sin. We're still in the sin flesh. Sin follows us around like a coat. 
Sin follows us around like hair, like skin tag. Like it's attached to us. We can't help it. We can't get away from it. So once you come to terms with understanding that what he did forgave you of everything, and he already knew what you were going to do in the future and the mistakes that you might make, you realize, I'm still forgiven, even if I make a mistake. There is nothing I have to worry about. There's nothing I have to fear. Because I can't mess up enough to turn his loving gaze away from me. I can't mess up enough to cause him to take his salvation away from me. He promised he wouldn't, and I believe his promises. He promised that I would be washed of all my sins, that they would be forgotten. And he, I believe him, and I trust in his promises. I hope and bank on everything that he said, because if any of that, even one iota of it, isn't true, then none of it is true, and none of us have any hope. Because if there's any possible way we can send our way out of his grace, we've all done it already, long time ago. And there's no hope for any of us. But luckily, our God is more powerful than that. He's smarter than that. And when he makes a way, that way stays open. And it is open to anyone who would receive it. Be blessed, brothers and sisters. You are forgiven if you believe. If you believe, and if you're walking in his light, you are forgiven. If you're still stuck in sin, if you're still trapped, you're forgiven. You are forgiven. We are all forgiven. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I pray he blesses you all richly in all things good. And I'll see you guys in the next video.